sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. just so many seconds and hours and minutes in each day. Their length never changes, and yet they often seem to change. When you're traveling, for instance, time may lengthen or quicken according to your mood. I'm not referring to the conveyance in which you travel. It doesn't matter if you use a train, a bus, or a boat. But when you travel by car, alone, when you sit behind the wheel and watch the highway ribbon out in front of you for mile after endless mile, time hangs heavy on your hands and you long for a way to ease the monotony. Yes, mister? Yeah, fill it up. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess I'll stretch the pen a little. Gets kind of cramped behind that wheel after a while. <laughs> now, how far is it to Salt Lake City? Oh, about uh, 200 miles, maybe 250. Oh, all right. Ought to make it by three in the morning if my luck holds up. Well, the road's pretty good from here on in. Uh, say, do you know anything about radios? What, uh, car radios? Yeah. Ah, uh, we installed them here. Well, uh, take a look at mine, will you? Something's wrong with it. Sure thing. Now, when you're on the road alone, a radio's a good bet. It helps to pass the time. Yeah, I know how it is. I get kind of lonesome when you travel the way I do. I put in 16, 1,700 miles a week, maybe. <laughs> it's a lot, mister. Uh, you got a bad wire connection on that set. Can you fix it? Yeah, it'll take me about three minutes. Well. Uh, 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 say, look, mister, you uh, got room for another passenger in the car? Another passenger? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't ask, except I, I'm so sorry for the kid, you know, and she, she said something about being, you said something about being lonesome, rather. Mm. And she's trying to hitchhike her way to Salt Lake City to see her old lady. Uh, some guy dropped her off at a fork about an hour ago, and she's been, uh, well, she's been waiting for a lift ever since. Well, I guess I can give her a ride, uh... Where is she? Inside. <laughs> Good looker, too. Nice shape. <laughs> hey, don't take it easy. I'm a married man with two kids. Ah, well, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, sure, I know how it is. I'll ask her if she wants to lift while you fix that wire. Okay, mister. Okay. Oh, excuse me. What do you want? Oh, the gas attendant outside said you were looking for a lift to Salt Lake City. Uh, you going that far? I'm going to try to make it tonight, yeah. Well, uh, I don't usually like to... Uh, my name's Keeler, Leonard Keeler. Everybody calls me Len. My name's Lola Pickens. Well, if you get your stuff... I don't have any suitcase. Oh, it's having light, huh? Hey. Uh, well, uh, you coming? I, uh, I guess so. You don't have to worry. I'm not the kind who makes passes. I, uh, wasn't thinking... Okay, that. mister. Radio's working fine now. I'll be right there. Now, come on, Lola. There's a long stretch of road ahead of us. We'd better get started. Cigarette? Yes, thanks. Oh, there's a lighter on the dashboard. <laughs> there's so many gadgets up here. Uh, the round one. Oh. Uh, the flat one for the heater. Which works the defroster. And the dial turns on the radio. Where's the gadget that turns on the dishwasher? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and if you don't think I'd have a dishwasher in here if I needed one, well, <laughs> I like a lot of cheesecake on my car. <laughs> I'm willing to pay for them, so why not have them? It's a nice car. Yes, yeah, sure is. Where are you from, Lola? Chicago. And you're hitchhiking all the way to Salt Lake City? It's the cheapest way to travel. I'll say. Oh, you're, you're pretty nervy, a girl like you traveling on the road alone. You ever run into trouble? Oh, once or twice. Every once in a while you come across a Romeo who thinks he's terrific. But I know how to handle that kind. I bet you do. What do you do for a living, Lola? No, I, I wasn't getting nosy or anything like that. I was just, you know, just trying to pass it. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind telling you. I've been almost everything from a waitress to a dancer in a burlesque line. You got experience, huh? Too much. Now I'm going home to my folks. That's where I should have stayed in the first place. Yeah, there's no place like home. What do you do, Mr. Keeler? Call me Len, huh? 
Oh, I'm a salesman. Oh, what's your line? You won't laugh now. No, of course I won't laugh. Of course it's <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't know why, but that always gets a laugh. Well, what's so funny about courses? Oh, I don't know. You wait till you're fat and 40. You'll find out that I'm practically your best friend. <laughs> Oh, I say, it's good to have company when you hit the road. <laughs> it's nice to meet someone who's regular. <laughs> What's that? Mm, what? It's like a man standing up there at the bend in the road. Uh-oh, waiting for a lift, I guess. Poor guy. It's getting dark. Mm. I know how it is when you stand out there and watch the cars go past you. Well, Lola, in as much as you've got a heart as big as a pumpkin, suppose we give the guy a break, huh? <laughs> Yeah, he looks okay. Might even be an XGI. How far are you going, mister? Wheeler. Where's that? Uh, about 150 miles from here. On the road to Salt Lake. You're in luck, brother. Ah, here we go again. When do I have another cigarette, man? Help yourself, Laura. You comfortable back there? Yeah. Thanks. Been on the road long? No. It's getting kind of late. I guess I'd better put on the light. Why, you want a cigarette back there? No. Well, as long as we're all traveling together, I may as well introduce myself. My name's Keela. This is Miss Lola Pickens. Rhymes with chicken. Cora <laughs> <Horace> Scream. <laughs> I said her name was. I heard you. Not very chummy, is it? No. What's your name, friend? Lee. Mind if I ask you what your job is? I, uh, haven't been working at it lately. Well, what is your line when you work at it? I'm, uh, in ladies' wear. You don't say. Who'd you work for? You never heard of the firm. I bet I did. I heard of every ladies' wear firm in the country. I, uh, I work for Lewis Brothers. Lewis Brothers? Mm-hmm. Uh, where's that? Salt Lake. Oh, you got me there, brother. That is one firm I have never heard of. We're out of business now. Oh, but looking for, for another setup, huh? I'm not looking for anything, mister. Including conversation. Well, I, I just thought Oh, that... leave him alone, man. Maybe he just doesn't want to talk. That's all right with me. Might be a cigarette for you, Lord. Oh, sure. Well, it's like we're climbing. We're going into the mountains, I guess. Oh, wait a minute. It's a crossroad. Hmm. Route 7, Salt Lake City. Route 7A, Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> so you get there either way. Well, I take a peek at the map and see which is the shorter here. Take Route 7, mister. Uh, no, it seems like 7A is shorter. Listen to me. Take 7. Now, wait a minute, friend. I'm still driving this car. We'll take 7A. It's short, eh? Sure. Save maybe 20 miles. Goes through the hills. This car can climb like nobody's this. <sighs> Hope the good weather keeps up. The radio said it might get foggy before morning. Hey, that reminds me. May as well have some music. Don't put the radio on, mister. Why not? I... I don't like music. Now, look here, friend. Seems as though you don't like anything in this car at all. Maybe you want me to drop you off at the next turn. No. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> uh, look, uh, don't mind me, Mr. I... Uh, I haven't been feeling so well lately. I'm I'm sort of convalescing. Oh, that's different. But, but if you don't mind my saying so, a good disposition never stopped anybody from getting better. Sure. Sure, you're right. What was the matter with you? Uh, it was my ear. Your ear? Oh. Mastoid? Not exactly, no. I, but but I, I'm all right now. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Well, Lola? Yes, sir? Snap that radio on, huh? Hmm. It's, it's got a warm-up for it. Good set, though. How's that? Ah, it couldn't be better. Mm, it makes me feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Hey, sir, hey, mister, I, uh, I wonder if I could ask you for a favor. Sure. Well, uh, my father's very sick in Wheeler, and I'm, uh, I'm getting kind of worried about it. You want to make a call or something? Uh, if you don't mind. Oh, it's all right with me. Except, where can you make it? I don't think we'll hit another town until we get out of these hills. Well, there's a farmhouse up ahead. I I could make a call from there and pay him for it. 
Okay, Leach. Will you wait for me? Naturally. You don't think I'd leave you flat out here this time of night? Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll try to make it fast. No hurry. He's a funny kind of guy. Yeah, let's see. All the time he was sitting in the back seat, I got a creepy feeling. Creepy? Like, like he was staring at the back of my neck or something. Oh, it's a nice neck. I don't blame him. We interrupt this program for a special announcement. Well, what's this? Hmm? We've just been notified of a first state alarm broadcast for an inmate of the Lowell Hospital for the Insane located near Pike City. That's only about 20 miles, huh? This man escaped from the asylum two hours ago, and he's a very dangerous homicidal maniac. His name is John Slade, although he is probably using an alias. He is 5 feet 11 inches tall, light brown hair, blue eyes, about 170 pounds. <coughs> this man is dangerous to both men and women, and he strikes without warning. He may possibly be immediately identified by the fact that he has an insatiable desire to cut small sections from the hair of his victim. <coughs> if you see this man, please notify the nearest state police barracks. Now we turn you to our regular program. When? Now, wait a minute. Simply because that general description fits Leach. But how do we know? Huh? What's, what's the matter, Lola? I... I can feel... Look at my hair. It's the back lens. Lola. There's a piece of your hair missing. Time passes quickly on the road when there's someone to chat with and a pleasant tune to listen to on the radio. But when that tune goes sour and the conversation turns to death, time stands still. Oh, no. Stop the car, Lynn. Let's get out of here. I can't see the sun. Oh, what's the matter? He's coming back. Thanks for waiting, Mr. Keeler. Did you, uh, reach your father? Uh, no, the, uh, the line was busy. Well, then, uh, try again at the next farmhouse. Well, never mind. I can wait. Len? Yeah? You're all out of cigarettes. I, uh, well, yeah, yeah, here, I got you. No. What? I, I mean, I don't want to smoke right away now. Anyway. How about you, Miss Bill? No, 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 thanks, no. Hey. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Dickens? I... I thought you touched me. Is that any reason to jump like that? I... I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just going to ask, would you... You folks mind if I sat up front? No. Okay. I mean, you can't sit here. I can't? There's not enough room, Leach. Oh. Don't you need some gas, Lynn? Gas? You, oh, sure, yeah, gas. Yeah, I'd better gas up at the next station, uh... If we can find one. I'll, I'll keep my eyes open. Say, maybe it would be cozy if Leach sat up here with us. No. We could stop the car for a minute and he could get out and come into the front. Out? Oh, oh sure. Uh, here's their room. <laughs> Lola can move over. She doesn't take up much space. Yes. Stop the car, Len. He can sit in front. Okay, Leach. Hop out and come in front. Step on his lens. Hey! Come back here! Come back here! We've left him behind. <laughs> He's running after us. Don't stop, Len. Don't stop. We wouldn't get far in a flat. Jimmy, what's the idea? Well, it's a funny thing. It must have been in gear. She jumped ahead without warning. Yeah. Say, hey, you got a flat. I know. That front tire. I uh, guess we'd better go to work on it. Hey, let me do it. What? Huh? Let me fix it. I, uh, I want to pay you back for the ride. The spare's in the trunk. Here's the key. Uh, okay. Won't take me long. Lynn, what are we going to do? Now, take it easy, Lola. There's a way out of this. We can outsmart him. 
There must be a way. Well, as soon as he gets the tire fixed, can you stop the car again and leave him behind? The ignition key's on the same ring with the trunk key. He's got them both. I'll go crazy if we don't get rid of him. Every time he moves, I can almost feel his fingers around myself. How do you think I feel? My, my scalp's been crawling up and down my spine. What do we do? We've got to play it straight, you understand? Whatever we do, we can't let on we know. But suppose he gets it. He won't if we play it tomorrow, Lona. Hmm? Here he comes. Yeah, this shouldn't take more than ten minutes, Mr. Keeler. Uh, you, you sure you, you don't want some help? Hell no, you stay where you are. That suit of yours is too good to roll on this road. Len, for heaven's sake, think of something. I right. do. One thing we've got to do is all for time. Lord, do you think you can play up to him a little so he won't try anything until I work out a plan? Play up to him? You know, be sweet. Make believe you think he's handsome or clever or something like that. You don't ask me to play up to a maniac. I couldn't. But our lives may depend on this, Lord. How can we run? Into the woods? Sure, we'll be right where he wants it. Man, I'm scared. I'm so scared. I'm sick. Bite where you can on your thumb. He's looking at us. Huh? Come on now. Say something unimportant. I, I wonder what time we'll get into Salt Lake City. You do it. You keep him from being suspicious by giving him a lie. If there's no other way, what else can I do? To Len and Lola, changing that tire seemed to be an age. But to Leach, it was just one of those things. Okay, Mr. Keeler, she's fixed. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. We'll, uh, we'll stop off at the first gas station to have that other tire. Hey, didn't you say you needed some gas? Yeah. The gauge on your dashboard says you pull up. Uh, that gauge doesn't work too well. You can't trust it. Well, give me the keys, Leach. Uh, I think I'll drive, Mr. Keeler. What? Hmm? Uh, for safety's sake. You know, you've been behind the wheel for quite a while, I imagine. It's uh, better if we change over. But, uh, you see, I, I'm not tired. I uh, feel... Move up, Mr. Keeler. Let me take over. All right, if you insist. I can sit in the back. No, stay here with me in the front. Sure, there's plenty of room. Move over, Lola. <laughs> All set? Yeah. Here we go. Tell you the truth, I'd, uh, I'd like to see Lola again. Would you, Mr. Leach? You, uh, you remind me of someone I used to know. Who is she? Her name was Charlotte. Charlotte? That's nice. Like in Ruth, huh? <laughs> you, you said her name was Charlotte. That's right. She's dead. Oh. Well, maybe you're getting tired, Leach. Not a bit. I just started to drive. But, you, well, you're not used to the car. I mean, I'll let you know when I'm tired. Yes. Aren't you going rather fast? Fifty-five. That's all. That's all right. So this car can take it. We uh. We ought to be hitting a town pretty soon now. Why are you slowing down? I'm uh, taking this turn. But how do you know it's the right one? I know. All right, Lola. I'll be a backseat driver now. Do you know this road, Mr. Lee? I've been over it before. The woods are kind of thick here. Yeah. Why don't we pass the village? I can't understand Lola, why... Don't, don't, don't be afraid. I mean, well, we're strangers, but, but we're both nice guys, aren't we, Leach? We don't have much farther to go. We don't? What do you mean? We're not even near Salt Lake yet. I, uh, I mean we don't have much longer to ride in this jalopy until we get out of these woods. Oh. You know, I, I think that the first town we've come to, I'm getting a hotel room. I'm, I'm tired, and I guess I'll call it a night. Well, anything you say, Miss Pickham. You won't forget to stop, will you? I won't forget. What time you got, Mr. Keeler? Hmm? Yeah. 8.20. Oh, that's fine. Is it? What's the matter now? Why are you slowing down again? Yeah, there's a sign of that road fork. I want to read it. Can't you read it from here? No. What's he doing? He's 
looking up and down the road. Lenny wants to make sure there are no other cars. All right. We can't wait any longer. Reach into that side pocket fast. Have you got a gun? No, no, but I, I just remembered there's a pocket knife in there. Quick. Here. Okay, folks, get out. What? This is the end of the line. I've got the car keys, so you may as well get out. Go on, Lola. Two as he says. Yeah, that's right. Is this, a, this a hold up? A hold up? No. Then what's the big idea, Mr. Leach? You'll find out, Mr. Keeler, in just a second. Maybe we won't wait that long. <laughs> I can't look at him. Well, it's a good thing I had this knife. I, I guess you had to kill him, didn't you? Well, there's no other way. I hope maybe you could do it differently. I mean, he couldn't help himself. He was sick. Well, he's, he's better off this way, Laura. Wayne, let's leave him here and get back into the car. We can drive to, to the nearest police station and... and... Lynn? Well? What are you doing? Uh, I was just looking at his hair. His hair? It's so long, soft. Like yours is. <laughs> I think I'll just cut off a piece of it. Keep it. <laughs> What's the matter, Lola? Don't you like what I'm doing? I, I don't believe you. You couldn't be. No, Lola. He wasn't. Keep away from me. Come here, Lola. No, keep away. I won't use the knife on you, Lola. Just my hands, my hands, and my fingers on your throat. No, no, no. no. Please. guy called us about 20 minutes ago and we told him to stall right here. He recognized Slade when Slade picked him up. The car was stolen. Right up, Slade. Keep moving. Have you got him, Pete? Come on. Yeah, yeah, we got him. Are you Let's sure that right. you're all right, miss? I, I never felt better in my life. Yes, the road gets lonesome when you're spinning along behind the wheel. And it's lonesomer still when you're beside it waiting for a lift. Only sometimes it's safer to stay at home. said to the carpenter on that memorable occasion at the beach, the time has come and I must be on my way. I have an appointment with an old friend of mine, a watchmaker by profession. He's quite a pleasant fellow and I enjoy his company. He's restful, so to speak, at least for me. Somehow, whenever I leave him, I always feel well adjusted. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. Written by Lawrence Clee and starring Hart McGuire. You heard Wendy Playfair and Charles Tingwell as Lola and Len, as Leach, Owen Weingott, as garage attendant, Ozzie Wenburn. The Clock is directed by John Saul, a Grace Gibson radio production.